Do you guys want a tactic that averages 65% possession, dominates your games, and can win you a ton of trophies? If you do, then do stick around. So guys, it's Josh from FM Scout today, and I'm going to be bringing you a 4 triple two, highly requested and requested in the last video, aka the magic box this tactic originated from in the 1950s. Now, we are going to be breaking down four different tests today because we are also going to be watching a couple of games, so we are going to be testing with one less team today. But the teams we picked out are all your suggestions, so every single team that you see tested with in today's video is going to be a comment from someone. And to be honest, the comments are really good with suggestions, so please keep on coming. Please do comment a team you want to see tested with. And also, please give me some ideas for tactics as well because this was actually a viewer suggestion as well. So it is good to see, and I do always read the comments and we'll make content out of them. So let's get into this and see how this tactic done. So then guys, the first test we are going to be doing it with is going to be Fenerbahce. And this was a comment again. So the person that commented, please, hopefully this is what you were after. I'm pretty sure you'd be quite happy because we have managed to win the division with this tactic and also win the Turkish Cup. Unfortunately, we did get Manchester City in the quarterfinals and they just had a little bit more quality than us. And I think that's pretty fair to say. However, we did score 100 goals and only conceded 12. So very, very solid. And when you see the tactic, you understand why that's quite impressive to be conceding as little goals because this tactic sort of originated so that managers could get more out of their sort of forward players and sort of dominate possession in the centre of the park. Like I said, 1950s is where it got so-called the magic box name or magic rectangle. Of recent times, the manager that you probably say uses a 4 triple two that I can remember quite vividly, you know, kind of can remember it, would be Ralph Rangnick, who actually, when he was at Manchester United, did deploy that 4 triple two for a short while. But overall, this tactic performed very well across all four of the tests today. And we're going to start off with this one, as I mentioned, but João Pedro with 30 goals, Lincoln coming in with 23 assists, and Serdar Aziz coming in with the highest match rating. Now, so we'll go over to the data hub now, guys. And in the general performance, we're looking at 2.78 goals per game and only conceded 0.33. So a very good sort of return. You're not conceding hardly any, and you're scoring over two and a half goals a game with nearly a 90% pass completion ratio. So very impressed with that. And since we have got a little bit more time this video, because obviously we've only got four teams to test with, we are going to go ahead and look at the league stats because that is where you can really see where this tactic thrives. So then, guys, as you can see, this is going to be the standout sort of stat. Most possession, 67%, very dominant. And when you see the tactic, you'll see how that is done because you really do dominate that midfield. You've also got the most points per game, the most goals, fewer shots against, most shots for, most clean sheets, and fewer conceded. So we're nearly dominating every statistic in the league, which is very impressive. And like I said, Fabache are a very solid side, so... You could somewhat expect that to be consistently having 67% possession on average is still very impressive. We then hop over to Strasbourg in the French division, which obviously are quite a challenging team to use. They're not one of the favourites to even finish inside of the top six, according to the media prediction. But we've sort of flipped that script on his head and managed to finish in second place behind PSG, who obviously were always going to win it. They are very, very dominant in this division scoring 78 goals and conceding 28. And it's going to be Gamero coming in with 24 goals. That's going to be Leonardo, I believe, was coming in with 14 assists. So still relatively solid at the back. A few more goals going in over compared to the Turkish division. But obviously, this is a slightly harder league. And also, we are one of the weaker, I'll say weaker sides, not one of the weak, weak sides, but, you know, not one of the sort of top four favourites. If we go into the data hub again then, General performance, so we're still looking at over two goals a game, and we can see that under a goal a game still, which is exactly what we want to be seeing. The pass completion actually breaks into nearly the 91% mark this time, and that's something you can expect. This tactic it is really, really good at completing passes and also dominating possession. And obviously, if you like that sort of game style, it's going to be perfect for you. And the thing that I really liked about this tactic as well is the fact that you've got that side, and sometimes when you use a tactic that is all about possession all about passes completed and stuff like that. It doesn't mean you're going to get goals and, you know, it, the play's a little bit, not boring to watch, but it's just sort of side-to-side -side passing. With this, it is very progressive. It's very going forward, very in-your-face, 
and it works so, so well. And if we look over at the league stats again with Strasbourg, we had 4% more possession than PSG. I mean, that's an achievement in itself. With 65% possession, best pass completion sitting at 90, most shots for, fewer shots against, and that is going to be our sort of four in the division. Obviously, PSG picking up three. So we had more than PSG. I'm going to take that as a win. But overall, a very, very good season. And as you can see here, the possession's the real, real standout thing about this tactic. Now, we're going to test with Millwall, and this is going to be quite funny because someone challenged me in last video that I could not get Millwall promoted in one season. Now, if you're watching, hopefully you're a Millwall fan and you're pleased. And also, if you are, please leave a like on the video. That is for everyone. Please leave a like on the video and do subscribe to the FM Scout channel because we've done the challenge and we've done it not by tons of points in first place, but we did finish first place nevertheless with four points to spare with 100 goals scored and also 53 conceded. So a few more in this division um, than obviously the other leagues, but it is quite a tough division. And again, Millwall traditionally aren't one of the favourite favourites compared to your Watford, your Norwiches, your Burnleys. You know, they're just some of the teams that are usually expected to take these top spots. We're going to have Andreas coming in with 55 goals and Honeyman coming in with 17 assists. So very good season from the centre forward there. And overall, I mean, I'm definitely happy with how this has gone before we even look at the stats because it's a very good finish in the division, obviously the best you can do. And I was expecting to, I was aiming to try and finish in sort of the playoff spots with this with this team, to be honest. But overall, very happy with how it's gone. Now, if we go into the data hub and general performance, just over a goal conceded per game with this team. So, you know, we are breaking past that goal mark now, but it's okay because we're scoring over two goals a game and also the pass completion is still very, very high. Now, one thing I would say with this tactic is there are definitely loads of things you could tweak. So if you do need to make it more defensive, I am going to go over what you could possibly do in that part of the video. So be sure to stick around for that side and I can sort of show you what you could do if you're holding on to a lead or possibly you want to go into a game a little bit more cautiously. So then, guys, we've done it again. 65% possession. It seems to be quite an occurring theme. 67% with one of the teams, obviously. But we've also had the most goals and the most points per game. So three of the stats overall this season, which I'm very happy with, to be fair. Um, Obviously, there are very good teams in this division. Um, Watford, Burnley, Norwich. Um, I think that's pretty much the main ones. Did I say Burnley? I think I said Burnley. There are some good teams in this. So to be winning it over them is a very good accomplishment. And the last one is going to be AC Milan. Obviously, probably the strongest team we're going to be using in terms of overall squad ability. And it went very well as well. We managed to win the Serie A. We won the Italian Super Cup. Unfortunately, we fell short to Napoli in the Italian Cup. And Manchester City, again, the Man City curse. We matched up against them in the Champions League. So not the best run in the UCL. But however, in the Italian league, it was very, very good. 91 goals scored and only 23 conceded. It's going to be this guy here with 35 goals, who is a very, very good player, by the way. If you do need a striker, I would recommend. Teo Hernandez with 15 assists and also a 7.69 match rating. It's actually going to be our goalkeeper coming in with 97% pass completion. Obviously, relatively easy in this because he is going to be playing at short. So messing up a pass to the centre-back shouldn't be happening. So that is why that is going to look so high. But if we go into the data hub quickly, in general, this is very impressive. In a division like this, where there are several good teams that can get goals, 2.39 goals per game and only 0.61 conceded. And as you can see here, 92% pass completion. That's the highest out of all of the teams. And obviously that does make sense because they have got a very good midfield. Um, Tonali being one of the standout players. But overall, a very, very good season here. And we didn't really put a foot wrong. I mean, when I say that, obviously, if you want to be going to be petty we could have won the champions league we could have won the italian cup possibly the italian cup actually would be the one i'll be really focused on because man city are just such a hard team to beat in the first season with no silence or whatever but we actually dominated pretty much every stat in this division i mean most points per game most goals most shots for fewer shots against best pass completion most possessions 65 percent compared to inter milan's second place finish with 62 fewest conceders and the most clean sheet. So we are really dominating everything we possibly can. But we have got a game for you guys, and that is going to be a 7-1 win in the quarterfinals of the Italian Cup. And it is against Juventus, obviously one of the strongest teams in this, when you actually look at the ability of the players. And we're going to watch all of the highlights. as Tio Hernandez kick things off into Giroud, into Leal, which, it, I mean, it's a beautiful finish right first time into the top right corner. What a strike that was. We go again 
pretty much instantly with Tamori into Tanali, who finds Brahim on the edge, who finds Dest, great overlap and run, who squares it into the Starman, and that is going to be 2-0 inside of 25 minutes. So when I when I saw this, I mean I knew it was going to be quite a quite a thriller of a game because there's two goals so early on. Rafael Leal here. As you can see, there's always a fullback available to sort of cut back, which is always a good thing, as Tanali has a bit of a pop shot there. And I do believe the keeper could have done better. I mean, it looked like it was right at him, but, you know, I'm not a professional keeper. Maybe I shouldn't talk too much. And we go again here, Tio Hernandez, beautiful overlap and run. Poor from Bonucci, and it's an easy, well, it's not an easy finish. Drew's you know, he wasn't even looking and he hits it off the post and in. So it's a good finish, but overall shock and defending from Benucci as Brahim puts a ball in here and it's going to be a set piece, which obviously are very dominant in this system as well. And we are absolutely running away with this game. Tonali pings the ball over the top. It's a bit of a weird one. What's going to happen here? Benucci again. Oh, he's having a stinker. Oh, there, he's having an absolute stinker, Benucci. It's very unlike him as well. Such an experienced centre half. We go again with Florenzi with a ball into the box. And it's another set piece, and we are really running away with this now. But obviously, we do concede a goal um, right at the end, actually, in the 85th minute. So that's going to be probably Vladovic just, yeah, just absolutely dominant. It's a wonder ball over the top, and he tucks it in to the or sort of the near left post. But overall, a very dominant game. And when you see the stats, 68% possession against a team like Juventus just shows that we, you can hold the possession against the top teams in the division as well. And as you can see here, it is a full strength team. I mean, this midfield here is actually really good. Pogba, McKenney, Locatelli to be dominating 68%. I mean, 68% possession is nearly 70%. And we're doing that against a midfield of, to be honest, you know, I'd say maybe not world, world class, but definitely getting there. And to be dominating a team of this, this standard is a massive achievement. So then, guys, we are now going to break down the tactic. But before we do, please do leave a like on the video, subscribe to the FM Scout channel. And if you do like these tactic videos, feel free to check my channel out in the description below. We post sort of about two to three tactics a week over there and also do rebuilds, etc., etc. But let's go in and break down the Magic Box FM23. This is going to be the Magic Box FM23. And we're going to start off by actually going down this side, as we usually do. And then we're going to do the player roles. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can be a little bit more defending, etc., etc. But it is a very unique shaped formation. And obviously, the box, you can sort of see a box in this area here. I don't know if that's why it's called the Magic Box, but I would imagine it has something to do with it. It does sort of, you know, leave an area of the pitch somewhat empty. But it just works really, really well. But we're going to start off with a positive mentality. In possession, you want narrow overlap left and right. Play out of defence, much shorter passing, be more expressive and low crosses. In transition, you want regroup, counter, distribute to the centre-backs and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, a high press line of engagement, much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. In terms of the player roles, you want a sweeper keeper on support, ease off tackles and take more risks. Two ball playing defenders, very important they are ball playing defenders because obviously you could see how involved they were sort of building up from the back and it's just a really key thing about this. Obviously it is really important. But we're going to start off with defending on the ball playing defenders, shoot less often, stay wider, close down less, take more risks and hold position. And on the left hand side it is literally the same. So I'm going to show you one of them. I'll just double check that. It, definitely the same. Just want to be sure. And as we go up the pitch, we're going to go over to the wing backs and we're going to have one on the left on automatic, cross from byline, shoot less often, stay wider, mark tighter, and run with the ball. And on the right hand side, we've got a wing back and automatic, cross from byline, shoot less often, stay wider, mark tighter, and run wide with the ball. Two in midfield, and these can be tweaked. So I'm going to tell you what roles possibly would work if you don't want to use these for some reason. This work, this first one, you could use a DM quite comfortably, but I did prefer a ball winning midfielder. I know I just I always prefer that. But we're going to have a defender, ball winning midfielder, mark tighter, shoot less often, dribble less, take fewer risks, hold position, and tackle harder. And next to him, pretty much what my favourite role in the whole game when it comes to a midfield player is going to be a volante simply on moving to channels no extra instructions if you don't want to use volante you possibly could look to you know maybe a roman playmaker something like that could work but i would really suggest trying to use a volante if you've got the players that can do it we then have two wide players that are actually sort of or well, they are advanced playmakers now again I know not everyone has advanced playmakers to hand. Possibly, you know, you've only got wingers. You haven't got too many midfield players. You could switch these to wingers and sort of just 
have them sort of cut in in any way. But I just set up with this because it's traditionally how this was played with. But you can easily use this with wingers. So don't worry. Don't let it put you off. And we're going to start off then with an advanced playmaker on support. Pass it shorter, cross from byline, dribble more, roam from position, sit narrower, tackle harder, mark tighter, shoot less often, cut inside with the ball, take more risks and cross less often. And on the right hand side, we've got another advanced playmaker on support. Pass it shorter, cross from byline, dribble less, hold up ball, roam from position, sit narrower, tackle harder, shoot less often, cut inside with the ball, take more risks and cross less often. A load of instructions on that one. Now, we are seeing a lot of these players with the tackle harder option on. Now, if you guys are picking up too many bookings with certain players, you can untick the tackle harder sort of instruction. But I just like it because it gets them stuck in. It gets, you know, it keeps the intensity up a little bit. If you are picking up too many bookings, that is a pretty much an instant fix for that. We then have a deep blind forward on the support role to sort of support not only the striker, but the two advanced playmakers. Pass it shorter, run wide with the ball, roam from position, mark tighter, hold up the ball, take more risks and move into channels. And the advanced forward on attack, pass it shorter, shoot more often, tackle harder, mark tighter and move into channels. And that is going to be the Magic Box FM23 broken down. If you guys do want to download it for yourselves, you can download it from the link in the description or on the FM Scout website if you are on there. And it's going to be it's pretty much going to be the first one on there. You will see it. It'll be titled relatively similar to the YouTube title, so you won't miss it. But if you want 100% to get to the right tactic, just click the link in the description. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the FM Scout YouTube channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.